I want to share with you a way that everyone in this room can contribute to our understanding of our world and our universe in a meaningful way. But I first want to do that by considering this scenario. It's getting dark. The temperature is dropping. The animals are behaving strangely. An eerie silence settles in, then screaming. It's not a bad horror movie, is it? It's what? Totality. Wasn't it amazing? How great was that? A fantastic ex experience. It was truly an awe-inspiring event. Pictures just do not do it justice. If you try to explain it to somebody, did you try that? And they're like, uh, this all, you know, I haven't seen one. But it is truly awe-inspiring. For me, for those few minutes of totality, I felt connected to our universe. As I gazed up and saw that silvery crown where the sun should be, I looked around, I saw the sky behaving in a surreal way, which is an incredible moment for me. And considering that the moon's shadow traveled from coast to coast at nearly 2,000 miles per hour, those two minutes and 17 seconds were an opportunity to really experience a truly rare event. And for those in Rexburg, it's not going to happen for another 235 years, okay? <laughs> now, you may be wondering what totality has to do with you contributing to our understanding of our world and our universe. It's through an idea called citizen science. What is citizen science? It's basically an amateur scientist, a citizen that works with a professional scientist on a significant project. History actually has many such examples of citizen scientists. One of my favorites is Benjamin Franklin, who with no formal education laid down the foundation of our understanding of electricity. But the idea faded with time because of the advent of higher education, strange enough, because suddenly you had to go to college to become a scientist. But the idea of research is coming back into the hands of the everyday citizen through two things, the personal computer and the internet. Now anyone from middle school up to retirees can get involved in meaningful projects. For example, you can help scientists understand butterfly migration through the butterfly count project. Or you can help understand maybe the fluctuations in the populations of birds through the bird count project sponsored by the Audubon Society. You can even help in understanding our universe a little bit better by the identification of galaxies in the Galaxy Zoo uh, project. One of my favorite sites is called Zooniverse, where you can get involved in such diverse projects in areas of history, medicine, art, literature. But why should you do it? Well, for me, it is an opportunity to be part of something bigger than myself. And these projects cannot be done without contributions by you, the citizen scientist. In fact, it is through citizen science that we at Brigham Young University, Idaho, a teaching institution, were able to get involved in several projects. And I just want to talk about three of them today. The first one is the Citizen Kate experiment. This was led by Dr. Matthew Penn of the National Solar Observatory, who wanted to study the inner solar corona. Now, if you look within that little yellow circle, you'll see some of the delicate magnetic field lines that constitute that structure of the solar corona. The problem is you can only see it during totality. But the problem was at any one site, he would only get a couple of minutes of data, right? That's as long as totality lasts. So he asked for 60 volunteer sites across the nation to help him do this. We gladly volunteered and took some really good images of totality. He is now in the process of stitching all those images from all those sites together to form a 90-minute movie of the sun. So although, although, although not yet finished, he sent me a short clip of what he's working on. You see those magnetic field lines, and if you notice closely, you'll see some things happening. You notice some plasma traveling along some of the magnetic field lines there, and over here you'll notice some gentle twisting of the magnetic field lines in the solar wind. All this helps us understand our sun a little bit better. The next project I want to talk about is called Soundscapes. It was actually developed by uh, Dr. Trey Winner of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. He wanted to take auto recordings of, of environmental sounds at various locations across our nation. 
So we jumped on this project to put microphones all over the place, including Porter Park here in Rexburg, Idaho, and at the entrance of a beehive. Now the beehive showed some very interesting behavior because as totality near, neared, the bees got a little confused. They thought it was becoming night. And so they all came into the hive. And so let's go ahead and listen into that. So this is them coming in right now to the hive. As totality nears, you'll notice you get really quiet because most of them are in by then. See how quiet it got? Totality's really close. You can tell because there'll be some other activity coming up here pretty soon, you'll notice. So not only did the bees behave a little strangely that day, so did some humans, okay? It was, it was a lot of fun. But anyway, of course, after totality, the bees then left the hive. It must have been a very confusing day for them, okay? <laughs> Another project we got in, involved in was a NASA-inspired idea to film the shadow of the eclipse come across our nation from the advantage point of high-altitude balloons. Now, we don't know anything about high-altitude balloons at Brigham Young University, Idaho, but that's okay. <laughs> we grounded up a couple dozen volunteers who with no experience in launching balloons, and we launched in collaboration with Weber State University a couple of balloons into the stratosphere, carrying several cameras and scientific equipment. And I want to show you the video from one of those cameras. Whoops, there we go. So you notice right over here the shadow of the eclipse? It's going to be headed right here towards Rexburg. The audio you hear is actually that microphone placed in Porter Park. that excitement of totality now it was amazing I don't know about you but I felt connected to even the people around me I didn't even know it's like without any choreography or anything like that we all started just yelling at the same time and it was amazing in fact being involved in these projects was just an amazing uh, opportunity for those people because it really made uh, totality more meaningful now for those who missed totality you will have another chance in 2024 in 2024, as it passes from Texas through Maine. And for those who don't have as much patience, but you have a lot of money, you can travel down to Argentina, where there's going to be a couple of them before the one in the United States. But in either case, what I want you to do is get involved in some people-powered research, to be part of something bigger than yourself in projects that scientists just can't do without help from you, the citizen scientist. See you at the next eclipse. <laughs>